Derek J. Elliott. You might have the realistic ghost cloth figured out, but I have one trick up my sleeve. I can make him cuter. Look, just joking, you guys. If you haven't seen it, uh, Derek J. Elliott dropped a fire post on Instagram, mega tasty looking. I think he also did a tutorial on it, so check it out if you haven't. So today I thought I would make a nice little cute ghost. So we'll be going through how to model a nice small little cute ghost and animate him with a cloth collision, plus a bonus animation tip with pressure. So let's get into the video. So let's start with the modeling. So I'm going to add a cube. We're going to use this cube for our ghost. So I'm going to go shift a mesh cube. I'm going to do a subdivision of three and I'll add a cast modifier. So we have a nice spherical cube. I'll apply the subdivision and the cast modifier and I'll go into edit mode, go into wireframe view. And I'll just select by pressing C and then selecting all of these vertices below. Press X, delete those vertices, and then using Shift Alt, right click, select this loop down here. And just making sure by pressing S and Z to scale it down to zero. So you can see down in the left bottom corner that I've scaled the Z to zero. So that means it's perfectly flat, or at least it should be. I'm going to extrude this on the Z axis pull it down and I'll do control R and put a couple of loop cuts, but I'm just making sure that the squares are nice and tight. So I don't want to have too much stretching and I'll put them right there. Press A twice, control N to recalculate the normals. I'm going to exit edit mode and press control A to reset the scale. So I have this shape. One thing I always struggled with was how to make rips in cloth or rather those scuffed edges that you see. And I have a really simple trick for that. I'll do shift a mesh and add a landscape. Now this landscape, if you don't have it, you need to go under your edit preferences, search for landscape, and you should have this add mesh and landscape. I'll lower these subdivisions to 25 because we don't need as many lower those also to 25. I'm just going to drop it down to G. And now I'll just scale it on the Z axis, maybe scale it up slightly, control A, reset the scale, always remember to reset the scale, and I'll push it up slightly. So it's intersecting, I'm just going to add a Boolean. And I'll select the bottom, the landscape that we did earlier, you can now just move it around decide where your creases are going to be. And then just apply it. I'll delete the landscape. And now I can just clean up very quickly this mesh. If there's any of these like strange edges, you can also close in, file them out, something like that. I can now select everything and press M merge by distance. I'm not really bothered by the strange typography. This is a this is a good example of just trying to be as messy as possible because it will add a bit of freight uh, effect when it's uh, fully done with uh, cloth. I've just shade smoothed it and now it's time to work a bit on the arms. So the arms are going to be that easy. I'm going to go into the side view. I'll just select somewhere in the middle, something like that. You can also go into wireframe and I can choose both sides. Press W loop tools and create a circle. Now, again, if you don't have the loop tools, you can go under preferences, you can search for loop tools in your add uh, add on, and you can tick the box and have them ready. I'm just selecting the first circle, I'll extrude it out like that 0 0.0.25. 0 and I'll just repeat the same thing on the other side. You can also cut the model in the middle and then just mirror it. But it's fine. You can also be kind of precise with this method. I want to create a small face that's going to complement our character. So I'll just go here, press Shift Control B, and I'll bevel those vertices out, press W, and then subdivide them. And again, use loop tools to create circles. I'll also press X and delete those faces. So I have this, like a nice little face. 
I'm going to connect these loose vertices with J. So I'm just shift selecting both of the vertices and then joining them with J like that. And I can repeat that on the other side as well. When I'm done, I'm just going to go here in the middle, press Control B. And now I'm just beveling out a nice mouth. I'll just add a subdivision of one so I can see how it's going to look when it's subdivided, something like that. I can also try and create sort of like a smiling face, maybe something like that. I can randomize it. I don't have to be perfectly precise. You can have, you know, have fun, try different positions, try different frayed edges whatever you might have. Now comes the fun part. So now comes the part where we start to work on the cloth. So for this, I'm just going to rise the little guy up, shift add a cube. I'm going to scale that cube down and I'm going to scale it on the Y and X axes. I'm going to add a collision. I'll just leave it with the default, only the inner. I'm just going to put it to about 0.1 and I'm going to add a collision to my little ghost. And I also add another subdivision after the ghost, a subdivision of one, something like that. I'm going to go back into my cloth and now it's time to have fun. So basically, if we press play, this is what's going to happen. Our little ghost is just going to fall and all of the cloth is going to clip through him. Uh, a way of solving or mitigating that is by using self collisions. Self collisions are extremely useful as they prevent the object to collide with itself. There's just three settings here. So you have friction, distance and impulse clamping, and you can basically infer what's happening already from them. So friction means how much friction will be between the folds. I usually go with one, something like that. If I want a more silky experience, the distance is exactly that. So what is the distance of the effect when the folds actually hit each other? The impulse clamping, however, is a very interesting and often overlooked factor. Basically, it's sort of a button to stabilize if I understand it correctly. And it's usually performed like that. So it's a button that actually helps stabilize the animation. So if I see that something isn't working right, I just increase it to two and then I go two with the quality as well. So for example, I do quality three and at the top, you also have the quality steps at five. So you can also play with that. But for now, we're just going to press play and see what happens. It's fine. It's okay. Nothing special functions properly. We can increase the viewport of the second subdivision just to make everything a bit smoother. Let's get back and create something interesting with this. So this is it. This is going to be our little ghost. So it's a nice, cute little ghost. You can also add a solidify. So mind you, you will need to check out how the collisions work. You know, you might get a bit of this action over here. So you have this clipping part of the cloth. So going about it, you should add it before the cloth. So it's also taking into account the solidify action. I wouldn't personally use it. If I would use it, I would just use it at the end. I wouldn't necessarily go and put pressure on the system. Just going to use it and I would find a sweet spot where it's not too violent or isn't intersecting too much, something like this. For the last thing, I'll show you a nice little trick. So we won't be doing any texturing, any rendering, lighting or whatever. I'll just show you a quick trick that you can use with your ghost. So let's put the pressure to one and let's start our animation. So we have our ghost that falls down. And now if I tick the pressure, you can see our ghost inflates back. He does like a little spook. There's like a small spook. You can increase the pressure to two to three, though if you go too overboard, he's just gonna fly off. Now this, for example, it's fine, it's okay, but he springs forward. So it's just a question of finding that sweet spot where you where you want him to be. So you can just click the pressure somewhere in between and you see that he just flies away. So now if you want to keyframe this effect, there's a very easy way because you cannot keyframe this pressure tick. You can, however, insert the keyframes for the pressure in the factor. So it's a bit easier. So let's say he's just chilling on the floor and we like him until this position. So we're just going to insert this keyframe and we're also going to drop the factor to zero. 
And we're going to insert a keyframe there. I'll just jump one frame ahead, increase the pressure to two and the factor to one. Insert those keyframes. Now, if I go to the beginning, he just plumps in, he hangs out, and then he pops out. If you see an issue like this, you can try and mitigate it with the quality of the cloth. I can also increase the quality steps to about 10 and the impulse clamping, you can also increase it. Let's say to five in this case, and let's see if that solves our issue. Again, decrease the distance, increase the quality, and it should iron out any remaining details. We're working with low uh, vertex numbers and low subdivisions, so we can have a bit of a faster simulation, but you can make them also act differently. Though bear in mind that when you have more subdivisions on your object, it that will also reflect in the processing times. So I've increased the subdivision modifier just so you can see how it acts when it has more subdivisions and you can see that the time of processing has increased dramatically. Also, the pressure acts a bit differently. So he is going to behave in a completely different manner. So you need to take into account that when you have more vertices, the processing times are going to be longer. And also, if you're influencing your cloth with force or wind or pressure, you need to drive those values up because there's there's more vertices affecting the simulation. So this is gonna be it for this tutorial. We've made a nice little ghost. We've animated him with cloth simulation. You also now know how to approach cloth issues if you ever have them, if you have some folds that are stuck. Hopefully this will help you out in your animations and ideas. And that's gonna be it. Have a nice spooky October and see you in the next one. Bye.